All right, so um, why do we do this? Um, well, there's different ways to work with geometry um, once we get into Grasshopper. The reason a lot of people use Grasshopper is because of its ability to do parametric design or it's kind of associative design where the things that you do, all the operations have to be laid out into these nodes. And once you set up a system for your design, you can go back and change any of the intermediary steps or nodes or parameters or values and actually change your design dynamically. So this is what Grasshopper is really known for. Um, the other reason to use Grasshopper is, again, as an analysis tool, once you bring in geometry, you can do certain things to start to analyze um, different aspects of your design. So I'll show you a really simple um, example of that. For instance, if we have this geometry, if we hover over it, you can see that there's a referenced BREP. And BREP is just the, uh, the name for um, solid geometry in a grasshopper. So it's basically referencing some surface uh, from our model. And now we can go in and uh, use any of grasshopper's analysis tools to get some information about the surface. Um, if we go up here to surface, you can see that uh, in the surface tab, there's a few different options. Uh, there's options to make surfaces, and these are related to options you have in Rhino as well. You can do lofts, network surface, extrusions, things like that. There's primitives. There's also these analysis tools that let you get a lot of feedback about the model. So one thing we can do is get an area node. And we can put it into our model. So here's the area node that works exactly the same as all the others. There's a series of inputs. Here there's one input that's asking for some geometry. And there's some outputs. So this will output the area of that geometry, and this will output the centroid of that geometry. Okay. So to uh, get the area of this surface, we can either do the same thing. We can go to the G here, right click, and do set one geometry. Or we can actually pass the geometry from another node in our window. So in this case, this is already referencing that surface. So we can connect the output, which has that surface in it, to the input, which is asking for a piece of geometry. So to connect any of these, you just click on the output. You see that arrow uh, uh, icon emerging. And it gives you this leader, and you just connect it, and it snaps into the input. Okay. So once you give it that input, it turns green uh, or white because you gave it what uh, the input it needed. Uh, and if you select it, you can see that there's this point that's turned green because this object doesn't contain the surface. Uh, it contains just this reference point, centroid, and also has this value for area. So now we have our surface area of, um, of our surface. We can also do the volume. So Volume is up here under area. Another quick way, once you get a hang of which uh, nodes you're trying to use, a quick way to um, a shortcut to get to these nodes is you can double click on your um, canvas here and just start typing in the command or the node you want. So here I'm just going to do volume and just does a word search and brings up like the most likely nodes. And this is a good way also to find things instead of messing around with these toolbars. You can just say, well kind of want to know the nearest neighbor to something, and then it'll come up you know, really with the answer, even if you don't know where it is in your, in your toolbars. Here I'll do volume, just hit enter. It works exactly the same way. And I'll pass the geometry again. So you can see the kind of flow nature of Grasshopper. You can connect the inputs to any number of outputs. Right? You can pass this geometry to an area node. You can pass it to a volume node, and each of these things generate um, outputs. So here I have a warning. It's saying it's not closed. Um, so it might give you an inaccurate result. Uh, in this case, we can um, use a cap holes node to actually cap that surface. Now you can see that we have the surface here, and we have a new surface here that's capped. right? And then we can pass that in, and now it's This brings up a, a good point in terms of how geometry works within Grasshopper, is that uh, when you start to pass geometry through this workflow, through these nodes, it's kind of copied in this virtual environment, right? So when you pass the, sh the surface from here to here, it doesn't move into this node. The original one is still here, and it, kind of, and it makes a new version that's processed here. So at any one point, 
anything you've ever made in Grasshopper exists in one of these nodes. Um, and if it's getting too complicated, like there's too many things visible, you can always hide and unhide uh, these nodes. And to do that, you can just right click on a node and you can unselect this preview and we'll hide that object from your preview. Um, a shortcut, sometimes if I'm working on something it's getting very confusing and complicated, you can just select everything, control A, to select everything. And then um, there's these two shortcuts for shortcut options. If you hit the um, middle mouse button, it brings up this wheel of shortcuts. Or if you right click anywhere on your um, canvas outside of a node, you have the same exact options. And here you can go to preview off, and it'll turn off, see it goes kind of dark gray. It'll turn off all the preview for all the nodes. And from here, you can turn on just the one that you want to see. So I just have my cap surface. Another option here is enabled. So if you click, unclick this enabled, it'll actually turn off that node in the solution. So whatever's passed here, it won't do anything. This is kind of a dead end for the data. You see now the volume node is complaining because you're not passing in any information. Okay, so now we have uh, our area being generated, our volume. Uh, we can visualize these numbers just so we can see them more clearly uh, by using a panel. If we go, if we double click on the canvas, go to the panel. And a panel is like a text box and it's really useful for a lot of different things. Um, one way it's useful is to visualize the information that's stored in your nodes. So if you connect the panel to any output, it'll show you exactly what's living in that node. In this case, it's just one number, so we can use this as a quick uh, visualization to kind of see what the area of the surface is. If we right click on it, there's a series of options, just like for any node. Right clicking kind of displays any options and they change for the different types of nodes. Up here, you can rename it. So if we right click on that panel, there's a blank spot here, and you can actually name it like uh, surface area. These are just things that help you kind of visualize things and keep track of things, and really make Grasshopper as a more of a dynamic analysis tool, not just like a functional uh, way to, to do things with form, but a way to get feedback as you change geometry. Okay, panels are also useful. Um, they don't just display text data; they display any kind of data. So if I here I just copied and pasted the panel. And you can do this with any node. You just hit Control C, Control V. And I can also connect it to any other node. So here it'll just show me what's in the geo node. It's one reference surface. This, uh, the panels are a really good way to troubleshoot what's going on. At any point you can connect any node to it and it'll tell you exactly what is contained inside. Okay, so just to show you how this works dynamically, um, this is still a reference, right? So everything that's happening here is driven by this original reference surface. So if I show all my geometry again, here's the surface that's referencing. And now if I start to scale uh, this surface, you can see that the surface area is, is uh, changed dynamically, right? This is still just a reference. If we hide it, you can see that the reference has followed our surface. Um, so if you don't want, so Grasshopper is running all the time. Every time, anytime you make a change in Rhino or in Grasshopper, it'll re-execute the solution and it'll kind of stay dormant. So you, so this will happen dynamically all the time, which is usually what you want. If you want to stop Grasshopper from executing, which you might want to do if you have a really complicated uh, setup and the execution takes a long time, you might want to like freeze it, disable it, and then make all your modifications and then re-enable it. You do that through the shortcut again, if you right click anywhere, or middle mouse click, and there's this lock icon. And you, when you hit the lock, you have this lock icon here, and there's this red border, and now Grasshopper won't do anything. So you're kind of free to make any setup, connect anything, and nothing will execute. When you're in the locked mode, you can manually execute Grasshopper one at a time uh, by hitting the, this uh, run recompute. Okay, so this is really comes in handy when you get to more intense um, setups, or later when we're using Grasshopper to link to external software like Ecotech. This is really helpful because you can kind of tell it exactly when to send things. You don't have to, it doesn't do it manually. So if you ever get this lock, you just go and hit the lock again, and now it'll be recomputing dynamically. 